Hey, what's up guys? Ryan Walker here again with Phoenix Studios and MyPhoenix.com and I've been seeing a lot of tutorials and videos of people who motion track their 3D text from Cinema or Maya into the scene and today we're going to do a new workflow while it's a little limited is a good way to get extruded text from Photoshop, bring into After Effects, we'll motion track the footage and kind of blend everything together to make it fit in the scene. So without further ado, let's get going. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, here we are. We're going to get this Photoshop After Effects tutorial going. Um, here is some footage that I just shot outside of my house to use to track for our logo. So I don't know exactly if I'll need this yet, but let's uh, save a still frame so we can use inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to do Command Alt S to save a still frame really quick. Photoshop is fine. Uh, let's call this background. Go to our folder, render that out really quick. And let me switch over screens here. Open that up in Photoshop. So here's our background we can use as a reference. And then also use this YouTube logo that I found online as the object that we want to extrude. So let's just work in this comp and let's just get this going. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make our canvas just a little bit bigger so we're not cropping the tops here. So I might just go three inches with that. And then I'll make the overall image because 2100, I mean this, this process will work for text, logos, but I'll be honest, it is a slow, slow, uh, if you're using shadows and stuff like that, it takes forever to render. But there's a couple workarounds we can do and we can still get a 3D extruded object inside of After Effects. So, with that said, 2100 would take forever to render. So let's go ahead and just drop this down maybe to, let's say 900. And we are ready to go. Going to grab our main layer, duplicate it really quick. And we need this to be transparent. So I'm going to take the white out. Leave the white inside the logo, that's fine. Apple, whoops, excuse me. Command D to drop that selection. And from here, we are basically ready to get ready for our 3D workflow, which is called Repose. I'm going to push F to go into full screen here. Um, command click your layer. Go up to 3D. Repose, Repose, Repose. I'm going to Repose this current selection. And so here we go. So here is the uh, interface. And uh, we can always get into this more or you can just play around with it. But basically this is your interface to get going for your 3D style stuff inside of Photoshop. Um, you have a couple of different defaults here. And the thing is, is I feel like most of these work better for text. We can do a text one sometime too. You guys can try it. But for this, I'm just going to go through a few easy settings. Not going to go through everything. And I'll just kind of talk about uh, the things that I use as we go along doing it. So basically... All of these options on the side are how you're going to orient your camera and uh, stuff like that. This, you know, we're just panning around. This is or you know, tilting, orbiting around our logo here. And if you push the, let's say you get crazy and it's all messed up, if you just push home, it'll get you squared up right. So let's see here. Let's let's just start. So let's look how big this extrude is, which you know. Going back here, that's our extrude depth. A little bit too big, but we can make it a little bit crazy just for tutorial sake. So even that's kind of big. Let's say just 0.2 for now. Uh, scale and all that is fine. Uh, only thing I notice here is our U, or I'm sorry. The only thing I notice here is our O is, isn't going all the way through here. So let's just make sure our internal constraints are set to hold right here. That should disappear, there we go. And so you're looking at this and you're like, well, okay, it's looking kind of uh, kind of crappy right now, but that's all right. We got a couple more things we can play with. We could add a little bit of a bevel to our uh, to our sides, maybe 0.5 on each. And that looks like it didn't change too much. And then for our lights to light our scene, uh, I shot this towards the uh, afternoon so let's just start with the daylights for default and if you don't see all of this stuff 
um, you know, with your access and your grid and all that stuff, you might have it turned off right here. Right now I have show all on. If I hide all, yours might come in like this. If you want to see, uh, you know, so here's the, the access to, you know, moves our object around. And then ground plane, light, 3D selection. If you just want to see all of it, you can. And we'll definitely use these tools to adjust our license up here in a second. So when all that's looking good, you can say, oh, actually, you know what? Before we do that, here's our other views we can look at. Top view, I leave it at default so you can just see the front of it. And render settings, we can, you know, lots of options to have this look different. But uh, we can go into that another, another time. Uh, mesh quality right now we're at draft, that's why it's kind of looking so-so right now. If we go to best, it should clean that up a little bit. And then let's push, oh, yep, here we go, it's thinking, it's thinking. Let's push okay. All right, so here we are. Um, if, if you see your default screen like this, it's just because we're not in the right workspace right now. Go up to window, workspace, and go to 3D. And here's all our options. So here's scene, layer, our lights. And if you click on all these, that's how you control them individually. So let's say you're in the scene. And so the quality set to interactive right now, if we do draft, you get this little, uh, you get buckets here, which is the same in like Cinema 4D or Maya. And it's basically rendering your scene. And let's go back to interactive and let's play with the layer here a little bit. Um, cast shadows, cast shadows, we can move this down and now we can get into each individual texture that's on top of this, each material. The only one I'm going to adjust right now that we need to play with is the extrusion material. So let me kind of go around here on the side to see what we're looking like here. And I don't want a complete gray so I might just, you know, just kind of play around a little bit of this, make this a little lighter. And also when we adjust the lights, we can play with these settings as well. And I don't want a pure white, so let's just kind of go inside like that. If at any time you want to extrude this more or anything like that, you can right click on this and go to edit and repose. Reposazuzu, repose. And you can see how slow this process is. Good technique, but definitely a slow render. And then from here, if you wanted to like extrude this more or less, you could do that right here. So I want to push FF to get back into our layer. And I'm just going to drag our background in here. Go back to this selection, push F, full screen mode. I'm just going to put underneath this, Command T. And I'm just going to rearrange this for now, just get kind of some reference of how we want to put this into our scene eventually. All right, so let's go back to our 3D layer. And let's, let's kind of position this how I want it. Maybe let's just. All right, so that's the camera. Here's our object control. And you, if you hold and click, you also get other options inside here of how you want to control your object or also your camera. Move the camera out a little bit. Your object, let's roll it back straight. And I'm going to have it floating off of the ground, so let's move it up. And let's take our camera a little bit back. and switch it over again. I'm just holding it to get a different option and we'll put it up. Okay, so that kind of gives us an idea of what it's gonna look like. So, <clears throat> let's, let's go back to our scene view here. Let's close some of this up. All right, so let's go here, let's Turn off the axis, ground plane, and this is still a little crooked, so let's take the uh, 
object, and I'm just scroll. I'm just moving left and right to even this out a little bit. And you know what? Let's actually have it. Let's have it be on the side. So something like that, and straighten it out. Okay. So as much as I would recommend trying to fake this in After Effects. Let's just go through the process of setting up lights and shadows for this, but just forewarning this, the lights that with this process inside of Photoshop, once you turn the shadows on is incredibly slow. So let's just take one of these lights, these default lights that are already in front here. And let's kind of start playing with this. So we have our, you know, our object or our camera rotation, object rotation. So now we're at our light rotation. So I'm going to kind of position this. And if I zoom in, you can see that this line is kind of intersecting, showing us where it is. And I'm just trying to, I'm going to try to match where I think the sun is coming. Which I would probably say about like that. <clears throat> All right, so let's just check our scene real quick. We're still, still at interactive. Let's go to draft. And this is where it starts to most likely slow down. All right, so let's take this light. Let's tell it to create shadows. So now you see we have some shadows that, you know, this part of the Y is hitting this part of the Y and so forth down the line here. If you want to be on the ground, which I won't, well, I'll show you how to do it really quick, but I wouldn't recommend it because the shadow catching in this is incredibly slow, but this is how you do it. You can either go up to your 3D and go to ground plane shadow catcher. And it's going to say it only be visible for ray trace render quality, which is the highest quality. And I'll show you what that is here in a second. And it's going to start as soon as I create it. But you also want to snap object to the ground plane. So what's happening right now is the buckets are creating the highest quality shadows it can to try and hit the ground. So see how it's on the ground just very, very lightly right here? Let's see what our scene settings are at. So we're still, we're still at draft. Um, if we kick this up to final, we can see how long it takes. But you can see how these shadows are getting darker. It's creating a little bit of a shadow over here now, which I don't really think we'll need for this project, but you might need it for your logo or text or, you know, whatever level you want to take your, uh, your logo and this tutorial to. So you can see how long this is taking. And if any time you don't want it to take this long, just click out and you can keep working again. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to turn the shadow catching off. And I'm also going to move this back to draft for now. And let's make this a little softer. And let's increase the intensity. And this is the color of the light here. I'm going to make it kind of similar to our sort of our, our browns and whatnot here, but maybe just a little lighter. And let's make it a little less intense. That might have been a little bit too much. All right, let's go back to the light, adjust this a little bit. So it's looking like I'm trying to get this long sort of shadow that we got going across here. So you see this shadow is going long, hitting the tree. I'd say I'd say that's good for what we need to do. Um, We'll take care of the ground shadows in After Effects, but this is basically all we need to do to set up our scene. So I'm going to, ha going to go ahead and just hide this layer, go back to our layer, go back to the scene options, and turn this to final. So we can try to get the best quality out of this. Let that render. We got done with the render here. I'm going to go ahead and just save this, call this YouTube logo. Uh, Photoshop file is what you want, so let's save that. Let's switch over to After Effects. 
And so here we are. I'm just going to go ahead and double click, grab that same Photoshop composition that we just made, bring it in as a composition, select OK. And it is importing the cameras and whatnot. And so Imports composition, live Photoshop 3D is the option we want selected. Push OK. Let's double click this and see what we have. All right, so here we go. And if you bring it in, you kind of see that this quality doesn't look so good. Um, we're looking at a couple of things here. Look at your modes and uh, toggles here and switch it over. And we're in draft mode right now. After Effects, when it brings in these layers, knows that this is very processor intensive and is going to take a while. So uh, go ahead and switch that back to get out of draft mode. It's going to calculate and render it all over again. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's a slow process. It's one way to get around not having a 3D program. And if you want to extrude simple objects and text, it definitely works, but the workflow is a little bit slow. So I think that's actually it for this one. I'm, maybe I'll break this into two parts again. Um, and we'll work on compositing this and fitting it into the scene for the next tutorial. Um, so yeah, that's it for part one. Next tutorial, we will bring this into the scene, track it, and put it all together. So I guess I will see you guys next time.